Hello and welcome back to Seaside Garage. A week back, I did a little experiment on my Fiat Panda. Whoops! I had a wheel wobble and a shake in the, uh, in the body of the car, and I'm pretty sure that it was related to balancing on the wheels, because it was only very slightly and only at a certain speed. And to be honest, it's a bit of a mystery to me how it actually works, because it's very important that the wheel is in balance, so no side is more heavy than the other. So if a chunk of metal is uh, scraped off here or from the tire itself, it will get the wheel out of balance. And uh, therefore you will have to put some small weights somewhere to, to counterbalance that. Uh, um, but what I don't really understand is if I get a stone in my tire, I don't think it's... I haven't experienced that it suddenly starts to shake, even though it got some more grams on the outside of the tire, which should be uh, a, quite a big deal, actually. But anyway, I might not really understand how it all works, but I do know that a wheel out of balance makes the entire car shake. Unfortunately, I think it's way too expensive to get them balanced, and I do not have the machine uh, that is needed for that. And another thing is, I like to do stuff myself, and sometimes that will not give the best result, but just the thing about trying to fix stuff yourself is, is a big motivator for me for being in the garage. It is just my hobby. Last time I tried to balance this tire using a piece of string in my roof or the ceiling, and, um, and I think it worked out pretty good. I got the vibration almost gone. Now I actually bought a special tool to do it, so let's try to do that. Some of you commented that it was way too crude a method that I did, and I totally agree, because there is one thing that my method did not account for, or the tool that I'm going to show you is going to uh, account for. That is, it can be it can be slightly different balance on the inside and the outside of the rim, and this will just be and doing it this way will only balance the entire tire and not the inside and outside. At a professional wheel balancing machine, it will tell you to put different sizes of, uh, of weight on the inside and the outside, and maybe in, even in a different location. That is more complicated than I am able to do using these crude to tools, I know. But I don't think it will matter much, especially not on slim tires like this and on old cars like mine. If you had some kind of sports car with wide tires, I would not do it this way. And if I had that, I would most likely also afford a wheel balancing machine. So, <laughs> But this is just my way of doing it, and I think it's going to work fine. Let me show you the tool that I bought. Right over here. I got another comment on my previous video that the way that I was hanging the tire by a string up here made the uh, gravity point a bit high and it would be better to have it lower down. This tool is according. This tool does that, I think. I assembled it. It was a quite cheap tool and uh, it's very important that this rod is in uh, is level and also that the table is in level. And um, <clears throat> due to casting being in very bad quality, I had to actually uh, do a bit of grinding down here to make this straight. Then there is this thingy that senses the wheel, the uh, the hub, the center hub goes over here and out the cone and senses it. And um, up here we have a pointy thing. And inside of this, you can see up there they say. is a concave for that pointy bit. So when we put this over top here, it is very free to move and turn in all directions. Next step is to make it all still. And then up here you can see a bubble. And this is actually called a bubble balancer. If you want to buy one, you can Google that. As you can see, the bubble is in the center and that is because I have calibrated it and made sure that everything was uh, level. And now I should be able to take the tire 
and put it on top of here. And then we can see if it is in balance. This is the tire that I balanced last time. So uh, it's going to be exciting to see how my method actually compares to this tool, which is not the best thing in the world either, but it is better than the method that I showed you last time, I think. But now let's just put the tire on top of here, center it like this and make it settle. So now it's settled down. Let's see the bubble. Don't know how well it picks up, but the but the bubble is slightly to the right. So that tells me that that I have put a little bit too much weight on it. Not much. It is within the red line, and I, I don't think it's bad actually. So my method from the last time is not, maybe not completely wrong, but it could be better. So I'm going to take the wheel off now and remove both of the weights and start from zero. Oh, and by the way, thank you for the comment about how to actually use this tool because I didn't really know how before. Well, it worked. And then back on the balancing device. And here we have the wheel is settled. As you can see, the bubble is slightly to the left, but it's not that bad. So I don't think a lot is needed actually. I'm going to put a 15 on the rim where it points against. This time I reached, this time came to the conclusion that a 15 grams and a 10 grams makes the bubble very much in center. I would like to have had the same amount on the outside as the inside, but I don't have a 12.5 grams. So we're just going to see what it will do if I put a 10 grams in a 10 grams, because I think it would be best to have the same balance. when doing this method at least. No, it's not enough. Fifteen and ten is the best. I'm just gonna hammer them on and then try again. So now we have a ten grams in there. <laughs> And a 15 grams there, and it is still settling slightly. But I say that is bang in the middle. I'm just going to turn it for fun. This was just a video showing my latest tool. I don't really know how good it is yet, but I'm actually thinking that it's working pretty uh, pretty well so far. Um, of course, the quality of this tool is not very good and I had to do some modifying to make it actually work. But it seems to be a good idea at least, and I think it's going to do the job just fine, at least for my Panda. So a big thank you from the Panda, I hope, and from this new tool that I hope works. And, uh, Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next one.